In this video, we're going to understand more about XM Cloud and how we actually develop using SXA headless on top of XM Cloud. So, first thing to get started is I'm going to kind of walk through the XM intro source control. So, we have our normal Docker structure, and then within source, we have our environment feature foundation project. Within project is our Sitecore user group conference folder, which in turn has our two sites. I'm going to open the E1 for now just to show the example. And within that, you'll see under source is where your Next.js project is. I have, of course, your layout.tsx, which is the TypeScript uh, Next.js app uh, for the SXA layout. And here it says this layout needs for SXA example. And this is the definition of the layout with the whole structure of it. Next, when we go into the components, we'll see two folders. There is the Sitecore user group conference, which is ultimately the um, custom components that have been created by the demo team. But we also have the SXA, which is the default SXA headless. Of course, this is all pre-release, so it may change. However, we get to understand a lot more from what's there to come from this. So I'm going to use the promo, since it's the simplest here, to kind of go through it. So the promo React component or Next.js component imports React, of course, and then imports the JSS image, JSS link, image field, and so on from Next.js, from Sitecore JSS, Next.js. And then we define an interface. This is really mapping to the template. This is a really good structure, again, as I said in the last video, to kind of help map how the template looks from within Sitecore to within React. So you'll see here the interface fields have the promo icon, promo text, promo link, and promo text too. And they're all defined based on their type. So it's image field or field of type string, link field and field of type string. Then we'll see that we have a type which is promo props. This is our props and it takes two things ultimately or two different fields. There's the params and fields. And the promo prompts is what's going to be filled by Sitecore. So when Sitecore ultimately connects the data from Sitecore into um, this component through uh, the JSON object, it's going to fill it in this promo props. So the promo props has the parameters. These are our rendering parameters and they are uh, dictionary of key uh, value strings and fields, which is our interface here coming from that fields, which maps to, of course, the fields in our template. <clears throat> now, if I minimize this, you'll see that there are only two exports here, one called default and one called with text. And these are the two elements that have been exported outside. And each one of these you can consider as the rendering variant. So we're going to see this in more details within Sitecore, but each rendering variant is created as its own exported constant. So here we have one called default and one called with text. And then we have the promo default component. And this is just a default constant that's going to be used by both of them to show what it should say if the promo is empty. So there is no data source for it. So it has like a component promo and the component content as we've been used to with every single SXA component. And then it passes in the promo param styles again, so that all the parameter styles that have been added, whether it's the grid layout, whether it's actual styles from Horizon, uh, you're able to pass it on to here. And then of course here it just says the empty hint and say the says the promo name. So that's the class name, the style, and then it says the name of the component. Next, within the default, you'll see that if props.fields is not empty. This is where we actually start creating the content. Else we're going to return that promo default component with the props. So again, it's going to just return that empty div showing that this is does not have a data source ultimately. Same, same thing here, where it's if it's props field, we're going to return something else. We're going to return that promo default component. Excuse me. So if props.fields is not empty, what we return is our ultimately our DOM structure. So here you'll see it's again very simple. It's a component promo, then component content, and then uh, they have a card image top and then card body. The card image top has the promo icon, which is a JSS image, that's its type. And um, the card body, it has the image caption, which is the promo text, and a promo link, which is a button off button light. So that's pretty simple DOM structure for a promo. 
and here we have the other one which is pretty similar the only difference here is this one has text so you'll see that promo text 2 is added instead of that promo link here now that we've seen how we create a component within um, Next.js or for our SXA headless or how Sitecore went about doing that for uh, SXA headless, let's go into the actual Sitecore environment and understand a little bit more on what's there. So I wanna start off by just going to the renderings because that's what we've been talking about. So I'll go in under renderings, feature, page content, headless experience accelerator, of course, and then page content. And within there, I'll choose Pro. You'll see that the promo itself, all it has really is the component name, which is promo. That's what's defined. That's how it maps that this promo component, this is how it's rendered. The next important thing we want to check is its rendering variants. So remember we have headless variants, which are diff a little bit different than normal variants in terms of that here, the promo has default with text, which again map to these two that we we've seen here, which is the, exported to constants export with text and export default and you'll see that they're quite empty like that template doesn't have anything at all in it because all it needs is just this name to map that name to the exported constant from the other side that's all it does so it's quite simple mapping and it's very effective so you're able to really create these promos and manage them in an easy way so it works Again, we're just going to see an example of that. So I'm just going to open Experience Editor and show it from there. While it, Experience Editor loads, this is the first time loading, so it's going to take a little bit. But while it loads, I want to also kind of go through a couple of other things that are unique and new to um, uh, the new SXA headless. So we'll see here something within headless experience accelerator called basic site. And the basic site has something called templates and has something called basic site setup. This is, again, you may see as you insert here, I should have opened that in a different browser so that it doesn't block my session completely but um, when we create a new site we're going to see that site template that basic site as an option there that's available now one thing that i'm guessing again this is not confirmed this has not been reported by sitecore but i'm guessing that this templates folder is going to be later used for xm cloud when you have the different templates available within xm cloud and choose which uh, template you want to run I'm just going to wait for it to finish loading. So as I was saying here, we have the basic site setup and templates. And if we go up here and create a new headless site, you'll see that one of the modules is that basic site. Now it could have been done as a module, just like all the other modules. However, since it's added in that structure here, I'm guessing that this is going to be used for uh, templates as well that would show up in basic uh, site setup in or in the site setup in XM Cloud. You'll see that it has a name, whether it's enabled or not, and then it has all the tenant modules, the site modules that should run with it. And the basic site setup itself is quite simple. It creates a full site for you. So it creates an about page, a default page design, a footer partial, a headers partial, and adds home data, and then adds home rendering, which is a PowerShell that actually goes into the home and adds all the renderings required there. So again, this might be the way templating happens uh, in the future, where if you wanna create readily available templates that you can reuse, this is probably how it's gonna go about being done so back to experience editor here and as i said when i drag and drop a promo so i'm gonna actually just go in and add a new promo just to show the whole experience from a to z um, and i want to show how when you add a promo you're able to um, really choose from these two variants that we have seen in the past so as soon as the dialog opens up, we're going to be able to choose the data source and accordingly be able to decide on uh, which variant we want for that promo. Okay, so I'm going to just use one of my existing promos here because I don't want to keep on adding new data sources. 
And now that I've added my promo here, I'll select it. And you'll see that my promo itself is um, uh, has that associated content, promo one, but I can also edit the component. So I'll go here, edit component content, and from variants, I will have the default and then the with text. So you'll see that both options are available and one of them will have the link uh, while the other, like the first one here has the link, the second one here has text. So you're able to switch between these variants as you've been used to from SXA. Now you're able to do that in SXA headless or uh, headless experience accelerator as well. Thanks for watching. For the next video, we're going to talk about uh, the development model and my recommendation of how to combine Storyboard with uh, Sitecore to be able to really create a great developer experience, both for your front-end developers and your Sitecore developers.